Uh, well, I'm only doing the intro. Uh, hi, everybody. I'd like to, uh, to thank you all for showing up. Uh, this is great. We packed the place. My name is Mark Lanza. I'm with the Motion Picture Sound Editors. And uh, this is our uh, July Sound Advice event. Uh, I would like to start off uh, uh, by saying that uh, June was a busy month for our Sound Advice events. We had three of them. We had a lecture from Peter Sullivan in Los Angeles about recording on a budget. We wound up having an event in London on uh, Mission Impossible uh, Fallout. And then we also did an event in New York. So uh, that was on uh, Isotope. Anyway, so if uh, all of these are posted on our Facebook page, if you're not on our Facebook page, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, you'll get the live feed as well as we post them after. Um, we have, uh, oh, we are gonna do another event next month and next month is gonna be also from New York. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll post that on our Facebook page when we get closer. Um, if you are a guest and not a member of the MPSC, please see me after and find out if you're thinking about joining the MPSC and uh, we'll get you an application and tell you what's involved. And uh, anyway, I'd like to thank Avid and Rich McKernan for putting this event on. Uh, please, round of applause for Avid and Rich McKernan. Um, giving us an early look at the S1 and S4 from Avid. Um, and a big thanks to uh, Jeff Komar, who will be giving our demo. So let me introduce Jeff. You need that? You need uh, that? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cool, I've got double mics. I'm gonna put this down here. How's everybody doing? Good, good. So uh, I'm Jeff from Avid, and uh, I'm gonna take you through a little bit of uh, the new offerings tonight, um, kind of dig in pretty deep, but uh, we're super excited to be expanding our family of offerings for, for UConn. And um, uh, that, that starts with a tablet. And prior to some of the new things we've been working on, that was specific to iOS, right? You had to basically live in that Apple ecosystem, which is fine, but we're expanding that um, uh, beyond, beyond that. We'll talk more uh, detail about that. But the family starts at a tablet, uh, and uh, highly recommended if you've never played with it. Um, we're we're, we're going to change, we're essentially going to call it Avid Control because we're kind of adding functionality. Previous was, was called Pro Tools Control, but uh, it's a, um, a multi-touch uh, control surface for Pro Tools and for other, other DAWs, and it's a way to basically start having excellent control of Pro Tools. For If you've got an iPad, it's essentially free, right? Um, uh, so, so that's kind of where the family begins, and, and we, with these new offerings, we're super excited about really giving people a better arc of, of transition uh, between different solutions as, as your needs in production grow. Uh, and we, we can certainly see scenarios where guys have S4, S6 in, in the studio, and then S1s at home, and then iPads in the back of the room, and, and you can, you know, the, it's a whole ecosystem. So we're super excited about being able to offer more options in this whole family, which is all Yukon. So that's the protocol. That's really the, the engine behind all of this is Yukon. So we're going to definitely get into that. So again, starting at, at Avid Control, uh, which was previously Pro Tools Control, and then Avid S1, our new um, new offering um, on, on really the entry level, but um, a great, super awesome foot, footprint um, that uh, we're going to talk about in some detail. Uh, the dock stays around, and the dock can, be, can augment S1. Uh, and we, we really like the doc uh, with regard to kind of replicating some workflows from S6. Uh, being able to have a, you know, a virtual parameter with a physical knob is really the idea. Uh, and you may or may not know, but not so long ago, we added the ability to have full monitor section control of matrix on, on a page on that as well. So you literally have your monitors and controls and dim and everything heads up display on via control via the doc. So, not just controlling an EQ or Sense or, or Dyne, uh, but actually all the monitoring goodness that is, um, that is driving Matrix. So also excited about that. S4 um, is, <laughs> is, our, is our really uh, taking a lot of the, the powerful functionality of S6 and bringing it down to a, a smaller, more fixed configuration um, that we're going to talk about in some detail. But we're pretty excited about that, uh, being able to offer all the goodness of the display modules and um, you know killer visual feedback and and uh, and workflows and layouts and post and all of this, um, but um, in a smaller package at a, at a lower cost of entry. So 
the common denominator with all of this is Yukon. And not just that, we, we really, really try to keep consistency. So color coding and, you know, am I looking at EQ? Well, that's magenta. Am I looking at pan? That's blue across the entire family. And you'll see as you start to kind of explore some of the new Avid control uh, tablet stuff that you're seeing up here. Oh, wow, there's curves. Yeah, that looks like SX. Oh, wow, that, I can see that that's kind of a pan view that's like that. There's a lot more that's dripping down from our flagship surfaces into this stuff, which we're super excited about. Consistency and color coding for tracks and functions, and then the idea of customization. So you may or may not have noticed, but um, there's some, actually a whole bunch of cool customization user, user triggerable soft keys on the bottom of S1 as well. So we'll get into that. But there's the family. There's the new family. Meet the new family. Um, so, and it all speaks Yukon, and, um, and uh, you have consistent automation and, and color coding across that family. So, so we're super excited about S1. It's, you know, <laughs> uh, Artist Mix has certainly been out for a long time, and um, it's been a really, it's a workhorse uh, product, right? It's like a really no-brainer, small eight faders, Everybody used them because it was a not expensive and a really reliable, you know, little piece of um, control surface gear. This is the next. This is really the next. You know, gotta have one in in any in any scenario. Um, so we're we're super excited about it. It's as you see, it's a very small footprint, but we've really tried to learn from S3 and S6 and and Artist Mix and in in clean up and, and, and really dial in the real estate that we have. And so I think you're going to be really stoked about it. Um, we've, we've taken all the goodness, the idea of the track modifier and function stuff on the bottom of S6, and we put that there. So I was kind of making reference to there's a whole bunch of user assignable soft keys that you'll be able to do if you're doing back and play or auto match or preview or whatever. That's really cool. Um, and then um, you... Uh, We'll talk about, uh, you know, basically expansion in a second, but start with one, grow to two, three, four, doc, be able to, to grow depending on what you're doing, right, which we think is really important. We've taken a lot of the visual feedback ideas from S6, as you can see, and we've basically augmented the tablet uh, with, um, with some of that. And so we'll get into details on that. But um, all of the, um, you know, all of the... The automation switches are RGB, so it's not just one color. So if you're, you know, read versus trim versus preview, etc., you get all that stuff, um, and uh, just a lot of cleaning. So we'll get into get into a lot more detail there. But uh, we're really excited about S1. Um, again, it's a ton of control for not a lot of dollars in a, you know, in a very small package. So expansion, uh, we think that you know people are going to really. You know, use this in different scenarios, and and if you need a ton of control, you could do 24 faders, you could do 32 faders. Uh, they, they they connect together, and it was really designed with the same kind of industrial design and and, and rake of the dock, as you can see. Uh, and the intention there is really um, the dock is kind of your center point. You know, think of it as the exploded homepage on S6, uh, and uh, obviously your your attention fader. So regardless of whether you're tricking, triggering an attention from software or from the surface, you're bringing a particular element to the 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 center to the to the dock, and then your uh, your chunks of of groups of units are on the S1s, however many you have, and the the metering tracks automatically. So We'll, go, we'll get into some detail about that, but there's like essentially a slave mode where those meters are glued to that particular view, right? As opposed to being in one of the tracks or channels or monitoring views that you're familiar with in Pro Tools Control, when uh, the additional uh, S1 uh, adjacent displays, tablets, are act as, hey, I'm a meter, right? So, um, so that's pretty slick. So that's the maximum expansion that you can do with S1 is four S1s plus a dock. And uh, all of those four can have tablets for metering in that slave mode. And then the, uh, the primary uh, dock is in a whatever you want to see, whether it's tracks or soft keys or monitoring or uh, the, uh, those particular pages. OK? Um, there's a kind of a clever thing on this. <laughs> that is, uh, there's some, some industrial magnets in each of the S1s. Uh, and so whether you have two or three or four or plus a dock, they actually literally mate together. So it's instead of having to put a bunch of brackets or whatever on your desk, li they literally go shoot, and they're perfectly aligned. And um, it's just a very clean aesthetic because the faders are kind of at the same 
you know, uh, same area. And um, so it's a, it's a, it's actually a pretty neat, um, neat way to quickly, uh, you know, deploy an S1 family onto onto the desk. So, so the pictures that you're seeing, and obviously here, it. It actually looks like it's one piece, right? Because it's it's pretty clean in terms of the design, but it literally is a uh, a tactile control surface, which with a place to to put a tablet. Now you're seeing it with a 12.9 iPad Pro. It doesn't have to be that particular tablet, which there's a whole family of both Apple and Android. Uh, tablets that will support and um, we're going to show it in a lot of different configurations as we do further trade shows just to show you hey you don't have to buy an insanely expensive uh, tablet you can buy other other things and so we think that's also very important um, but but you can see uh, a couple examples of um, of uh, the tablet in that in that metering mode that I, I talked about and obviously we've stolen from ourselves this is the these are the cool you know metering modes from Pro Tools with gain reduction with curves and the curves can be essentially EQ dyne or pan uh, and then all the routing goodness on the bottom so it's it's uh, there's some really neat stuff there and um, again a lot of this that came from S6 which is obviously our flagship but now is accessible to at a significantly um, a lower you know price point so obviously I kind of said this at the onset this whole family of, of, of surfaces is powered by Yukon right so as a result it's not just Pro Tools right you can use Yukon, you can use uh, Logic you can use Cubase uh, you can use um, Nuendo you can even use uh, you know Media Composer or Adobe Premiere so um, we really think that S1 is going to live in a lot of different environments uh, you know, be it a small editorial, a small mix, uh, you know, cutting room. There's all kinds of applications where this makes sense. And because it speaks Yukon, you know, it's this intelligent flip the app, and then there's a whole, there's a whole, you know, a whole um, app set, if you will, for that particular Yukon enabled app or DAW or editor. Um, just a little bit about you know the back of it, just so you can see. It's, it's actually quite similar to the dock, if you've ever seen the dock. You've got charging ports on, on USB, which is only you know voltage for charge. You've got gigabit Ethernet, obviously, to your, to your um, router or your switch, which is distributing all of your Yukon uh, network devices. Uh, power DC and then foot switch. And there's foot switch logic in U-Control. Obviously, things like punch in, punch out, start and stop transport, et cetera. So pretty, pretty straightforward right on the back of that. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I kind of glued together some different uh, possible views so you can kind of see what we've done with the app development, which has expanded beyond Pro Tools Control. And we're super excited about this for a couple reasons. One, we're not just stuck in, in, in Apple land. You have more options with, with Android, which is cool. And then also you have total flexibility with regard to the wh whatever device you use. So just kind of showing... Uh, iPhone X in portrait or landscape, fine. Standard iPad, fine. Either orientation, iPad Pro, fine. Any of those things work in any orientation, and you actually have a whole set of preferences that let you choose how many faders and how many tracks you want to see on all the different pages for said device. So it, you know, pretty cool. I was probably a skeptic initially about, oh, well, why, why would you want to do it on the iPhone? And then actually, when you're, you know, the flexibility of being able to go into a, a you know, record a vocal or actually do some things that just quickly with your device is actually pretty cool. So uh, Apple, Android, uh, and then pretty much agnostic about uh, orientation and size. So s way more flexible than, um, than Pro Tools Control, which was really fixed in, in only a couple resolutions. Um, so a little bit more detail for you guys to kind of see. So again, stealing from ourselves. Uh, Really nice surround panning. Uh, the EQ curves that, that have been part of S6 for a long time, which are also part of Pro Tools, that's there. The gain transfer curve that, again, was and always has been part of, of, uh, of S6 is there as well. Um, a lot of the conventions of the function scroller on the, on the homepage of S6. Just really trying to beef up what's in there uh, and, again, give you flexibility about how you, what and how you see within the app. So... Some definitely some significant controls, some improvements. Okay, so S1. We'll come back to that, but um, that's, that's a little bit of an overview, and uh, we're super excited about it. Uh, so S4, you're, sitting, you're seeing this guy here. Sorry? 
<laughs> uh, so S4, let's just transition over here for a bit and then we'll, we'll come back. But uh, S4, the, in, in concept, it was really, you know, S6 has done incredibly well. It is an immensely unique device because of its modularity and scalability. It, and, and we were excited about it in the, because of the way people deploy it is so wildly different. If you go back to ICON, D command and D control, you're like, I will take one 32 fader D control. It's like, Bruh. And it basically is that configuration. It's, it's, it's fixed and it never changes. And it's basically the same. It's got legs and it, it, they, all the rooms basically look the same, right? If you look at all the S6 rooms worldwide, they are all completely different. And that we like that. We like the customization. We like that you can set your room up the way you want it, put you know, post modules and attention zones and faders and pecs and whatever, and augment that with, uh, with ours and other people's furniture um, and integrate you know, hybrid workflows. So we like that idea. However, there's scenarios where people don't want all that super, super customization. They literally want to say, you know, I like what S6 does, but I, I need 16 faders and maybe, maybe a panner center section. That's what I want. That's kind of where this came from. It's, it came out of, I love the workflow. I want a more fixed configuration. And um, I want display modules. <laughs> and so those are the things that we really kind of focused on. So the first thing is we created a channel strip module, which you can see, which has a rake, actually has an angle, which is a much better experience to actually adjust, whether you're adjusting EQ, Dyne, parameters for a reverb, or you know, mic pre, whatever it is, obviously it's much easier to see the OLEDs when they're uh, raked, right? So this whole, we've basically taken the, the, the guts of the, um, the process module, right? Kind of subtracted that and came up with a workflow uh, using a, a kind of a focus button to choose what each strip is, is doing. And, and I'll, I'll talk about it and I can certainly take you through the, some of the workflows as well. But basically what you've got is a unified module that looks like a fader module and a knob module with a little sandwich of process in the middle. Right, and it's got a nice rake, so it's a lot really easy to see. It's one contiguous piece, and we call that a channel strip module. You're seeing two of those in a four foot bucket. The configs are pretty simple: three foot, four foot, five foot. You buy the frame; it's a fixed frame, and you can populate some options, which we'll talk about. But do you want from eight up to 24 faders? And you choose that, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, uh, so you're looking at here. Uh, an example of uh, 16 faders, center section, and then um, some options. Options can be attention knobs, zones. They can be uh, PEC direct, the uh, post module. They can be joystick module. Uh, and then you can have up to four total displays, one of which is allocated as a, in this case, as a master meter module, right? Okay, so channel strip module. It's a new piece you probably haven't seen before. And... Um, and it's, um, it's pretty clean, the way that it, uh, it functions. Um, it's a preset frame. Three foot to five foot, you pick it. You can uh, certainly go eight, you know, eight fader and then blank out, which you don't have now. Same concept of adding and stuff down the road. You can absolutely do that. Um, but um, it is uh, obviously considerably uh, less deep and more fixed and uh, you know, just kind of tighter, if you will. Um, so display modules, absolutely. If you want to add them, you can. Uh, if you want to buy them at the onset, you can. If you want to add them down the road, you can. If you want to reallocate a CDM, a display module for a master, you can. So it's, uh, again, most of the same flexibility of S6 in a smaller, smaller package. The workflow is very, 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 very similar, right? So, so Using, using layouts, using track layouts, using meter layouts, using spill workflows, using dedicated attention zones, using um, uh, you know, just all of, the, all of the stuff that you're used to in S6 is, is here, right? The customization, the soft keys, the, the, way, you, the way you engage uh, with automation modes, and, and if you're doing Atmos panning, the way that you visualize panning on the displays and in the, in the joystick module and on the touch screen, it's all the same. So that's the cool thing, right? It's it's basically bringing all that goodness to um, to a, a, a lower cost of entry, a more fixed uh, config that's just like, yeah, I want one of those three foot gun go, right? So that's kind of the idea of, of S4. Um, so let's get in a little bit deeper about what kind of what you can do, what you can't do. Um, you can have dual attention zones. So anybody that's worked on a D command or D control 
it's a cool thing to have this concept of a predictable dedicated knob section, right? It's basically, I attention a thing, a unit, a track, and I get, if I bring up, you know, an Oxford or I bring up a channel strip or an EQ37, I get a fixed layout of that thing that I can control, likewise the dynamic section. So that's cool. You can actually set up with your option modules, if you want, two knob modules that on attention, those will populate whatever views you want. It could be down in EQ. It's a great workflow. And um, that is available uh, in, in this system, right? So total of 24 faders using three CSMs, three channel strip modules. Total of four display modules, talked about that. All the same Atmos integration we described, right? And um, obviously being able to visualize 2D panning for Atmos on the display modules, all the goodness of the 2D, 3D views on the, on the touch screen, um, multi-attention zones. Um, workstation support is two, so, it's, so um, you, can, you can address and manage two uh, Yukon um, uh, workstations that are on, on the network, on the SX network, okay? Um, let's talk about the frame a little bit. I know the frame is not a terribly sexy thing to talk about, but we'll cover it. <laughs> uh, so it's so it's fixed. It's really built incredibly well. Um, it's very clean. Obviously, there's there's a rake built into it. Uh, there's only three configs: three, th three, four, and five feet. So it's very very simple. There's only one depth configuration, unlike S six, which can do five knob or nine knob, um, and then um, and then, uh, yeah, you've got a power switch. <laughs> Somebody laugh at that. Okay. Um, so just, just some configurations, just to kind of get you kind of thinking a bit. Um, three foot, um, 16 fader, right? Obviously some, some ways to configure this. 24 fader, uh, four foot frame, four foot 16 fader, 24 fader, five foot, okay? So let's dig in a little bit deeper, just so you can kind of see the different options. Workstations, I can connect two. I can obviously switch between them. I can manage those. I can create aggregate layouts that are composed of multiple workstations using the attached systems. Um, some of the options that I can add. To, now, the option modules, you can add up to four, right? But that depends on the size of your, your frame and how many of the channel strip modules you want to add, right? So obviously, if you populate out three, you're not going to have room for four options in that particular thing, right? Does that make sense? But you can pick the frame you want and have a total of up to four option modules. Options can be two knobs for attention zones, on attention zones, a, pa a, po a master post module, and a joystick, right? And then the displays, as, or as I mentioned. So channel strip module, channel strip module, channel strip module, center section, all the same stuff with regard to spill zones, right? Spilling VCAs, spilling auxes, spilling layouts, spilling workstation tracks, all that stuff is still there. Um, and then workstation control, which we talked about. Cool? Just some various, various configurations, okay? So obviously we have, in these configs, we could actually add, uh, well, there's four pieces there. But we could reconfigure this. Um, and so, so it's semi-modular, right? So you could reconfigure after the fact. Um, you could choose that you wanted to relocate the center section, as maybe some people have done with S6. You could do a split console. So you do have the ability to rejigger everything. You just have less flexibility than you do with S6 in terms of being able to change every possible module in any possible configuration, if that makes sense. Okay? So it's semi-modular. Um, it's pretty much a fixed frame, and um, you do have some shared, uh, shared components from S6. Obviously, your knob module, your joystick module, your displays are, are shared from that family. Let's talk a little bit about the channel strip module, since it's different, and just kind of what's the concept. So again, this idea of we took a fader module, took a knob module, you still have the ability to visualize those things the same way if you used an S6 in a, in a channel strip capacity. I want to see all of my EQs literally in line uh, or all of my, my Atmos panning channel by channel, absolutely. You also have expand workflows where you can then pop into expand. The difference is that there's, um, uh, you have a select and a focus switch. So where that swap button was on an S6, you now have something that's called focus. And so essentially, you would uh, focus a channel 
and then the center horizontal function keys are determining what that channel is doing, right? So basically you're saying, ah, that first unit track I'm going to focus, and therefore I want that to be an EQ, and then I want to hit expand. And so now, as you will normally see on the display module, that particular first channel has taken over all the knobs to be in an expand mode. So that's the basic workflow. Essentially, it's, it's, um, the nice thing is that you've brought your knobs closer. Ergonomically, it's better because they're, they're arced up. And, um, and you can still do things like all, all EQ, right? all channels in EQ, all pan, all sends. You can still do all of that um, and have auto-expand faders and, and, and all of that in place. It's just um, uh, you don't have a process module with, with individual uh, re repetitive functions and you don't have that other process knob, okay? But uh, I think once you actually t start to look at the workflow, it's, it's pretty slick, um, pretty cool. So it's a little bit about the focus channel. Just, a, just an aside on that, you, maybe somebody's thinking, well, now they're not going to do the swap layer. <laughs> but we actually are going to do swap layer, um, and there's, a, there's a, a plan to implement that into both S4 and S6 uh, in, in some, some different ways. So, so that is still something that's on the roadmap. Um, we talked we talked a lot about the rake, but um, a couple things on this uh, is obviously angle of viewing is much improved on this, uh, and we are going to offer uh, an optional kit for uh, S6 users to be able to actually uh, rake up their knobs, rake up their modules, right? So. Depending on you know how much you've scoured the internet, there are companies like in Germany and other places that offer. Uh, kits right that uh, allow you to do this they're hard to get they're they're not cheap and so we want to offer some of that same flexibility and and, and it is a better experience right in terms of the, the way you operate the knob module so we want to offer that for s6 users and we're going to and there will be a, a kit that will be available for for that okay so so that's a little bit about uh s4 and s uh, s1 um I want to make, make another kind of call out to a couple of things else that we up, have up here I didn't mention. We have a matrix, and really matrix is part of our, our monitor section, not just for S6, but for S4, and absolutely can be controlled by that same tablet device. As, I, as you said, we've added monitoring function into that. So this becomes really our hub of routing and control and uh, conversion and remote control mic pre's and monitor section for Atmos or stereo or 5.1 or 7.1. And all that can now be controlled from S6, S4, or S1 with a tablet, right? So you have all that dedicated control on that monitor tab, all controlled. It's a Yukon controlled device, just like all the rest of this hardware. So it's a really important part of the workflow. And now that we've got integration for, for speaker, for SPQ speaker tuning, uh, expanded Dante offerings, and also our DigiLink option card, which allows you to connect multiple machines, multiple HD native or HDX systems to a single matrix, which is pretty compelling. So we can expand up to, up to six additional 64-channel DigiLink cards to a single matrix um, with, with speaker tuning, with expanded IP audio, and be able to just you know, do anything we need to be able to do with that. So that's I definitely want to draw, uh, call that out. Um, we have uh, a couple other things up here I want to mention. Um, <clears throat> we've got some sessions, and we'll kind of take you through a couple things here on the different systems, um, both on the S1 and the, uh, and the S4. And um, yeah, so I guess we can, you want to open it up for questions, and then we can do some. Do some hands-on. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah. Uh, if you have, yeah, so, so I made reference to kind of this, this slave meter mode, and so essentially each S1, uh, it, it, each S1 can be, uh, can be you can essentially have maximum of four S ones plus a dock, right? So you can have one tablet that's in a multi mode, which can be monitoring, can can be the focus channel, can be tracks, can be a soft.